Hi, thank you for joining. In this episode, we are going to look at the Android Mini TV Stick with 4.1.1 Jelly Bean OS. This device will literally turn your TV with HDMI port into an Android system. This will enable us to surf the net, watch HD movies on big screen TVs with simple and convenient setup procedure. The package consists of, of course, the TV stick and under the cardboard divider you will find the accessories to work with the TV stick the micro USB power cable HDMI extension the user guide and the power adapter Let's put away the box. The user guide, or rather the user manual, consists of two sections. The first section is the Chinese write-up, followed by the English version. We will now get a closer look on the TV stick. Under the cover is the HDMI plug and at the other end it has a USB type A and a micro USB socket. At the side another micro USB receptacle and the micro SD drive. The micro USB socket at the end is for connecting to power supply. We can directly plug the TV stick into our TV's HDMI port. However, under some circumstances, for example, not having enough space clearing, Wi-Fi signal strength consideration, and etc., we might want to connect through the HDMI extension cable. After HDMI connection established, insert the power supply USB cable as well. And now, we are ready for some eggs. Switch on the TV and select HDMI input. My LCD TV has only one HDMI port and it is at the back of the TV. Thus, I have to shift everything to the front and redo the connections as demonstrated earlier. Plug in the power adapter and wait for the Android loading. The system typically would take around 30 seconds to boot up. Okay, we are in. There are quite some choices for input and pointing device. We can use a wireless mouse. Just plug and play. Oops, that was my Gmail arrival alert. Just move and click around. Or, we can use a compatible Bluetooth mouse. Bluetooth mouse need to be paired before use. For this mouse, I have done the pairing earlier. In the setting page, you can see the Mogo Bluetooth mouse is connected. It is also compatible with wide range of RF wireless keyboard. I have one here. Just plug in the USB transmitter and we can see the driver is being installed automatically. After switch on the power, we are good to go. Let's try some.
Oops, I have the keyboard set to input Chinese. I'll change it back to English by clicking on the button. Okay, we are ready to try again. For those who is interested, I will explain on how to turn on the Chinese input later. Of course, the most common and economical choice is the typical USB mouse. Just plug it in and start using. Right click on the mouse will always bring us back one step. For internet to work, you need to make sure you have good and strong Wi-Fi signal. You can use Wi-Fi repeater to assess in signal strength. If not, you will need a USB to RJ45 adapter and LAN cable to make connection, which definitely will be a much more tedious process. Let's perform some internet activities. I have to apologize for setting my production camera a little too bright. You might not able to see much detail when the TV's background is white. Firstly, we will go to YouTube, which is a favorite place for a lot of people. Just click a clip. Click the full screen button to get full screen. Click on the bottom edge will bring up a row of control bar where you can make various adjustments. Example, the volume. Up and down. This icon shows the current running background apps. Click and hold the mouse button will let you have the options to turn off the app. Next, surfing the Facebook, the much frequented social media sites nowadays. Right click to exit. And then I shall check on my Gmails. Just like on the typical Android phone, security entries to all these Google related sites are managed automatically by the system upon the user logging into their Google account on the system. One of the very crucial part of the Android internet activities is the access of Google Play and downloading plus installing apps. Let's try to download an app. Search. How about a free game? Ha! Huh. Playing Angry Bird on TV would be great. Agreeing to the downloading contract and click start download. After that, continue shopping. Let's go back to the home screen to check the downloading progress. Still ongoing. Done. An installation starts. Completed. And now we will have the icon on the home screen, I believe. This game needs no introduction, I believe. By the way, we can also turn off background apps by simply dragging it to the right. This is a typical micro USB OTG cable. It can be used to connect USB devices 
to the TV stick. In this section, we will connect memory cards and play some movies on the Android TV. Connecting to a USB thumb drive, go to the File Explorer. We will see the USB drive is now available. Click in. Here I have a sample of high definition movie. Click to open. It will ask for your options for the two compatible program to open the files. Again, click at the bottom part will bring up the video navigation panel. Okay, let's try another one. In my hand is a micro SDHC memory card. Insert it into the card slot of the TV stick and make sure it clicks in. You will see the SD card is now selectable. This time, we are going to play a RMVB file. As promised, we will go through briefly on the procedure to enable Chinese input. Go to setting, language and input, under the keyboard and input method, click default and select Google Pinyin input method. And it is done. To try it out, go to any site and try to input something. When the on-screen keyboard appears, make sure the lowest left key indicates Chinese Zhongwen. If it is not, click on the input icon at status bar or the lowest left key to change, and you can now input Chinese with pinyin method. Besides using the memory cards, we can also transfer files to the TV stick via Bluetooth. Make sure the Bluetooth is switched on and properly paired with your other Bluetooth device, which I have done so earlier. Here, I'm going to transfer an MP3 file from my laptop computer. Click on the file transfer notification and accept the file. Though convenient, Bluetooth transfer is rather slow by today's standard. Thus, in the video editing, let's fast forward a little. Completed. You can now check on the file upon completion by, say, playing it. Go to the file explorer, we can see the received file is indeed stored in the Bluetooth folder of internal flash. Should you decide to get rid of the file, 
right click on it and select delete. Exploring a little on the settings. Ha! This is the Google account setting, which is link and manage all your Google related sites and activities. About device show system configuration information and a system update option where you can check for OS updates. From home screen, you can see all your apps by clicking on the icon at the upper right corner and we can flip through the app pages just like on smartphones. To add a shortcut to home screen, click and hold the apps icon and you can rearrange the icons by drag and drop. To remove the shortcut from home screen, just click and drag it out of the boundary line. With this, you only remove the shortcut. The app is still remains in the system until you uninstall it. We shall end this session here. Click on the power icon to shut down the system. Thank you for watching again. Until next time, take care.